Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It's a brand new week, so my God, plenty of opportunities. But as always, want to be wishing you the best of best. Want to be wishing you well on this beautiful Monday over here from Helsinki, Finland. And let's get into the live scene right here, right now. As we actually have plenty to talk about. And yes, won't be making the same mistake that I made yesterday. Again, apologies about that. But all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month with the code YEAR20. That is for 20% off as it is the one-year anniversary of this community. So as always, want to be giving back. And that goes for each and every one of my programs and all of the different payment plans as well, which go out all the way to 10 months, up to 10 months, I should say. Uh, I should recap this as there's been a little bit of confusion on it, but the Trade Like a Professional program is the all-encompassing technical analysis program that goes from technical analysis, strategies, but more also position management, risk management, understanding underlying market dynamics, and of course, bonus modules, plus access to a couple of my proprietary indicators, plus access into the members-only Discord, uh, Discord community. That is mirrored by the Master Your Options program, which is just for options, not technical analysis, which I will actually make some assumptions that you know some base technical analysis in that program, but you don't need to be super... You don't need to be super sophisticated in your technical analysis to be to be good at, at options, but I do suggest that you have your technical analysis down. So, of course, then moving on to the Crown Jewel Indicator Mastery Program, that is just access to my proprietary indicators, the Jewel most importantly, and quite literally just access to that. So, of course, I always like to say this, please never feel obligated to to invest in any of these programs if you are not the type of person who is essentially not looking to do this as a living. These programs are really designed for that sort of diehard arch type of person who wants to essentially, you know, trade for a living. Of course, not everyone who's in the program trades for a living, but it's it's typically of that same caliber. So because we're all in the in the, uh, in the Discord community, we want to make it uh, very synonymous and uh, in a nice homogeneous group. Well, I always want to make sure that people are coming from the same background. So if that doesn't sound like you, I would suggest really take advantage of my free content as that's going to get most of the people 90%, 90% of the way that they want to be. Um, assuming that, you know, you have some sort of an external job or something like that. Uh, I would say that it's probably a little bit unreasonable to even go through one of these programs, which are, you know, 35 hours long. So understand that if, um, it, you know, if, if that sounds like you, maybe it's just better to go through all my free content. But of course, for the people who really want to take it one step deeper, well, that is where uh, that uh, that is who is it is designed for. So with that said, let's get into the live stream right over here and take off that. So we won't have the same sort of uh, issues as yesterday. And now the fun stuff. This is why we all came here. And of course, a daily uh, Bitcoin still maintaining above the Cyan 89 exponential right here. It actually has been defended as of yesterday and uh, wick down today uh, all the way down to 3930. So this is what I've been trying to uh, make very simple about the whole next phase of Bitcoin is that as long as we are holding this area, I don't necessarily want to be too damn bearish. Now, of course, are we hitting resistances right at the 4000 level? Absolutely. That's a more preliminary resistance. But as far as the medium time frame picture suggests, I don't necessarily want to be bearish as long as we are maintaining above. 3930 most importantly now you could make that into an order block bring it all the way down to about 3900 but let's go down to the lower time frames and put on the drawing tools and probably best represented by this blue box territory right here which you can see bitcoin is trying to flag out above it yes we do have all of our medium to low time frame also just coming down four hour stokes will be coming down two hour i believe are already yep they're down as well eight hours probably gonna be down yep 10 hours probably gonna be down 12 hours gonna be down nope they're not actually down and daily is gonna be up as well and then with the other higher time frames actually still down. So when we see everything change around like this, to me, it is it is second nature to where the critical price levels are, which to me, again, are 39.30. But we do see some things suggesting that there is a little bit of downwards momentum here. Is it enough to actually break this support or not? That's the real question. Now, of course, if 39.30 does break, do I get immediately bearish? I wouldn't say I necessarily get immediately bearish. I actually need to see the daily 21 exponential moving average break, but that will actually be crawling up to the 3900 level in the next few days. So I, I'd imagine it's probably going to probably going to have, you know, by happenstance, if we were to come down, you know, come down around there, it's probably when the 21 exponential starts to align with that area. Anyways, for now in the lower time frames, yes, it does look like a little bit of pressure, um, but we're still maintaining above the 21 exponential on the four hour. And as you can see that that's actually perfectly lining up with this 39, you know, 30, 39, 40 ish area support. So again, as long as that's holding, uh, I would go with the more lenient interpretation of this even though there are a few things suggesting um, su uh, suggesting we could cool off lower. You know, if, if we did break 3950, I would be looking for a move down to about 3900 even actually. 
Anyways, uh, for the time being, if we stay here on perhaps even a lower time frame, like an hourly, you can see that it is trying to flag out as, as of the current moment in time, something like this, which does have an implied target. We can check this one out if this were to break out to the upside, but we're going to need to we're going to need to at least close like a like a two hour dildo above this four thousand level, which we've been really unable to do for the past uh, couple days. Uh, if that were to happen, then the implied target would be around that forty one fifty hundred ish. Uh, sorry, forty one fifty, a little bit below forty one fifty. Yeah, the, the forty one twenty, forty one thirty uh, uh, area that we've been looking at for the past uh, few weeks, which would be my first target after bring uh, after after breaking out of this um thirty nine thirty ish area to the upside which would also be fulfilling another retest of this horizontal trend line, which originated all the way back from, well, let's actually put these guys back on, uh, originating all the way back from, yeah, no, uh, December, early December last year. Uh, so it kind of would make sense. Of course, that would only be initiated if we actually did start closing two hour dildos back above 4,000. Uh, but for right now, that is kind of what I am, um, you know, that uh, that would be a more bullish interpretation of this. Am I bullish overall? Do I believe that, do I believe that the lows for Bitcoin are in? No, I do not. Um, but doesn't mean that you can't have some, you know, some some nice up moves in your overall bear market, just like you, you know, have a, have dumps in your overall bull market. Anyways, as I do uh, struggle to search for words today, a little bit of a lack of sleep, I suppose. Um, let's go over and check out the 12 hour, which actually has been getting the more preliminary resistance thus far, the 200 exponential governing price action. So now to offer up the other side. And this is really, again, getting into like, you know, we're kind of just rounding out. If, if I were trading the lower time frames, this is what I'd be doing. I'd be using the 4,000 level actually right below 4,000 to be managing risk upon. There's very obvious sell action right around there. So even though even though the lower time frames do look like a flag, the 12 hour makes me think that we actually go all the way down to about 39. Um, with the higher time frame, also it's starting to get a little bit more tired. It looks like again going back on over here to the Stokes and uh, into the daily, which are both getting pretty damn high and you know looking a little bit tired. It does make me very apprehensive. But here's the thing, you know, the big news to me was CME's opening above for the first time this trend line right here, this diagonal trend line going, originating all the way back from late November of 2018. So to me, as long as today, or, as, or as perhaps more importantly, as long as CMEs don't break back below 3,900, I would just be looking at this uh, comeback as likely a retest and likely to be bought. As you can see right now, uh, CMEs did open up all the way at 4,025, and they have sold off uh, immediately since then, creating a nice, uh, you know, a, 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 a nice upside wick, which you know would imply more bearish activity. But we do have a nice gap all the way down here to again 3,900. So I'd imagine that if we do pop back down around there, it's probably going to be a buy. Um, or at least at the very least for a scalp, you know, does it continue onwards, backwards to all time highs? I mean, no, probably a very unlikely, but as for a trade, um, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but that, you know, that, uh, that, uh, ugh, it would be a very easy trade to manage and Jesus Christ, sorry about the stuttering. I know it's very annoying. It's very embarrassing for me as well. Um, but 3,900 area must be defended from CMEs. Otherwise, if we do lose 3,900 and this is where I think it becomes a lot more, you know, a, a, a lot more apparent. I would be looking for a move all the way back down to 3650 actually because I would just destroy the structure and this would start to look like a hunt and uh, and a fake out and usually when you get a fake out the uh, the counter trend movement is very swift and very violent. So I would I actually have a lot more um, eyes on the CMEs right now than I do on spot. Spot charts are a little bit more messy. Yeah, you could make, you know, as we said you could make the argument that it is a uh, it is a bull flag, but I think that it is quite I think that is quite compelling that uh, that CMEs did open out above this trend line, which had been holding, you know, holding this consolidation uh, consolidation in for the last three, four months, which is that is significant. That is significant by definition. Um, from CME perspective, really not much stopping us from a little bit under 4,200. So, you know, as as long as 3,900 is maintained, that would be kind of the trajectory. Let's check out what the oscillators are saying. We got daily Stokes still headed up, still looking okay. Daily RSI looks looks fine to me. Um, to me, I would be saying that, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that I, I believe it's quite literally this simple. As long as we're above 3,900, I do look for the upside. Um, and there's, and I would, and I'd be looking for a bounce at 3,900, which it does look like it probably wants to test at some point, which would not be out of question. It would not be, it, it would not be, it would not, it would not provide any sort of structural issues. It's not until we actually break below 39 where it becomes an issue from the CME's perspective. Um, 
And as you saw in the low time frames, yeah, there was some aggressive selling off on the actual open, but uh, nice little gap right here. And I'd imagine it's probably going to be defended. Probably going to be defended. Anyways, back on to spot charts to see what we got. And, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much the lower time frames. Don't really see any other glaring obvious issues. Um, you know, like I said, uh, really the only play from the downside perspective, in my opinion, is, you know, is, is if you're shorting the 200 exponential, it's obviously too late to do that. But we were talking about that yesterday. Um, or uh, or if 3,900 breaks. But again, I want to see that done on CMEs, not not spot right now. Spot charts are very, very messy. Uh, however, if if that 3,900 area were to break, I would be looking immediately down to 37 probably 36 50 something like that uh, would look about right but for now you know i'm respectful of the upside as long as we're above again 3900 uh let's see what about the higher time frames did we just set a two-day uh dildo and stone last night i believe we did we did yeah, we did. Okay, nice. Um, and again, still using the 50 exponential as resistance, which is going to be coming right around the 12 hour 200 exponential as you know, yes, you'd imagine because it's four times it. Um, but overall, you know, as long as we're kind of living below there, this is a consolidation from the higher time frame perspective using the 21 exponential and the 50 to kind of, you know, sandwich ourselves in between. We do have two day stokes actually still headed down. So this is very interesting to me. We actually did not get a cross on this on the last tick last night, which actually did get a rather favorable close i'd imagine and we are right at the edge of the bullish control zone so i, I do want to see bulls defend this relatively soon if this is going to be legitimate which i am still extremely apprehensive about moves like this i'm extremely apprehensive about any moves that originate typically on a weekend which is what we saw um to the four thousand level but um you know when it comes down to that that's that's that that uh that is of consideration right now uh two-day rsi not telling us really anything i mean still just kind of consulting between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone uh getting rejected from the bullish control zone on, on the last you know couple weeks ago but it's a new game now it's a new game and i think from a higher time frame perspective it's 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 quite clear as long as we're as long as we're below the 50 and above the 21 not all that much to be done right here, but the but the short term trending, uh, you know, our short term trending uh, indicators are up. We do have some pretty positive uh, crosses right here. If we go to the three day, I believe that we just initiated one as well. Yes, we are, and we are respecting the ten simple as support. And where is the ten simple coming in around thirty nine hundred? So now there's some actual legitimate structure being built up in this area. It's starting to look more uh, constructive. Um, in the more recent times, I mean, yes, the overall picture is still is still very corrective in nature. But judging for you know perhaps another run up um that you know that is is certainly certainly very very possible right now uh 50 exponential on the three day old time frame would be coming in right around 30 43 50 ish area which will line up with a few other things that we can see so Again, while Bitcoin is kind of in this, well, I shouldn't say indecision mode, I would say consolidation mode between uh, 3950 and, th and 4000, I would be leaning to, I would be, re I, I would be very respectful of the upside here. Um, again, it is, uh, it's, you know, it's, I, I always have difficulties taking longs in an overall bearish market, um, just like I have, just like like I have difficulties taking shorts in a bullish market. I am playing options right now. I do have essentially. A little bit more of a bullish setup. I've um, uh, I put the put spread on right here. A little bit more in favor of the uh, of, of of the sell side. What's up, Petro Del Franco? Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. And I have also bought the four thousand strike calls, and I've actually and I've actually spread those out with the uh, with the further month out. Yeah, down around here, the April regulars. Um, but nothing really crazy as of right now. I will probably. If we do break 4,000, if we do break um, the 12 hour 200 exponential, most importantly, this guy right here, again, right below 4,000, uh, I will just sell more of those 4,000 strike puts. That's essentially my play. I don't want to be long stock or, uh, sorry, long coin, whatever the fuck, <laughs> uh, the, what, uh, whatever the saying is in this realm. Um, but I, uh, I, I, I'd rather play it with options right now than spot just in case. As I'm very, very, very. I'm, you, you can see the shell shock in my eyes. I've just seen this kind of shit before, um, and I, I just feel a lot more confident with playing options. So with that said, let's get on over and check out GBDC as he will be opening up later today. We got 466 and GBDC did have a pretty favorable close on what was it on uh, Friday as well. In fact, GBDC to me. If we're going to be putting, you know, if we're putting in a nice consolidation right now, I would say that GBTC on the lower time frame really, you know, really mimics that. Perhaps uh, I think it's on the one on the hourly, yeah, right here, where it looks like we're going to try to put in some sort of an ascending triangle, uh, crawling up this uh, 445 support and the resistance um, block right here, all the way to about 490. 
so yes, we did kind of sell off on the um, you know on the close on uh, on Friday a little bit, just very 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 slightly. Uh, but as long as we're kind of maintaining this, that's that uh, uh, that would buy, would be my interpretation of it. That also means that if we break above four dollars and ninety cents, which is obviously very far, you know, very well and far away right now. But if that were to happen, I would be looking for a move, you know, probably up to uh, probably up to this five dollar and uh, five five and a quarter area right here. So we are starting to see some things uh, formulate. Uh, but I do want to go back to the daily and check out where our daily oscillators were. We got daily Stokes actually still coming down and rejecting getting into the bullish control zone, which is very, 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 very interesting to me. As the daily Stokes have been very accurate for GBDC, uh, daily RSI looks uh, neutral to okay. And I'd say as long as we're maintaining above this $4.60 region, uh, I would be respectful of this uh, of this being more positive in nature. Now, there still is bearish divergence between this point and this point, but I believe it's already played out. That was a 10% move from 490 to 430. I mean, that's, uh, that's significant, uh, to say the least. Um, and bought right back up immediately defending this area. So to me, yeah, it's, it, it is trying to console this area. It is starting to look a little bit more corrective the more time that it can, uh, that it can spend in here. Um, but going back to uh, spot charts, let's see if we can find any more clues within the uh, magical charts. Uh, we did just set another weekly in stone last night at six, or sorry, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Let's go to a higher time, let's go to a bitstamp chart. And so you can see right here, you know, again, if Bitcoin does get going to the upside, uh, there are significant areas of interest uh, right overhead. We have that 4100 area, which is going to be the 200 exponential, this purple moving average right here. And of course, the yellow 21 exponential, which is coming in right around 4280 um, <clears throat> at current price trajectory. So, you know, you could say that's 4250, 40, you know, 4300 essentially in that zone, which would line up kind of with our other areas. So, when looking at this, uh, this is what I want to be cognizant of from the higher time perspective. If Bitcoin would actually take a little bit of a leg up here, we do have weekly Stokes actually fully getting out of the bearish control zone now for the first time since May, or perhaps, sorry, not even May, it was uh, February of last year, 2018. Uh, quite literally the first time in, in in that time frame, which is significant. Again, I mean, this is this is what we were using support along for you know three years of of of, of the up movement on the weekly stokes, and now we're actually breaking out of this area. So, is something new going on? Well, again, I'm I don't necessarily call things straight up off of my indicators. They're more like secondary type uh, things to me, but. But from but uh, but but from all the higher level macro areas, we don't necessarily have that just yet. And I always want to remind myself and perhaps even remind you uh, where those areas are, at least for me. Uh, in the first and foremost would be the 200 exponential moving average right here. As long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly doors below there, I don't I, I, I don't really consider that anything's changed from a macro perspective. If Bitcoin were to do that, it would drastically change my tune on Bitcoin. I'd probably be looking for a move into the, you know, into the deeper 4,000s, but it wouldn't necessarily get it all done. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is significantly more important, and I would immediately actually get bullish off of this. Perhaps maybe not bullish is the right word, but I would certainly not be bearish. And that would be if Bitcoin could close the monthly dildo above the 21 exponential. You can see that it's extremely far away right now. It's 5,200. Um, and actually, this would be a more bearish setup, uh, if anything. The way that we're kind of respawning around this, uh, around the green 50 exponential right here. But for now, um, you know, still got uh, what a little bit less than two weeks until the end of the March. A lot can happen between then. If we were to end below the 50 exponential, that 3900 level, I would immediately become extremely bearish again. Um, so this is the, 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 this is the delicate balance right now, because we're on the verge of essentially confirming: Are we going to have a deep run into four thousands or? Are we going to maintain the former composure below this 3900 level, this 50 exponential on the monthly? By the way, the two week dildo time frame, very important as well. The two week dildo time frame has closed above the 10 cent, uh, the, the red 10 cent moon average for the first time in, I mean, since, since really July of last year. But of course, when it comes to judging breakages, like real break it, breaks of, of moving averages, I need to see both an open and close above this. So we've now opened our first dildo above it. We'll have a chance to, to both to both open and close our first uh, our first two week dildo above the red tens of moving average, which is actually coming in around now at thirty seven fifty. So it's rapidly declining. So that will likely be support if Bitcoin were to break down. Um, but you can see that it now has quite quite the buffer zone. Uh, however. Just like over here in July 2018, 
once we got our first closer above, the next one was actually a complete fading of that whole move. So that is also why I'm a little bit on edge because if there is going to be a hunt, if there is going to be a trap, if there's going to be a phenomenal trap leading onto the downside of the range, and when I say downside of the range, I mean 3,300, 3,400, and probably below that, uh, it would happen in the next couple of weeks, which would make sense as the month is ending in the next couple of weeks as well. So uh, we do have a pretty nasty exponential moving average cross right here between the yellow 21 and the green 50 exponential, which are actually still gaining divergence away from each other, even on that next tick that we got yesterday at, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So it's it's not necessarily so cut and dry right now. Uh, let me remind you that the last time that we were both opening and closing two week dildos above this uh, red tense moving average was actually right here in January of 2018, quite literally right, at, right after we had toppled out um, from the essentially three year bull run. So looking at this, it is of great interest to me because that's this would be this would be the preliminary change of behavior, I suppose, leading on into a weekly, leading on into a monthly, and then that you know changes around the whole structure. Of course, I forgot to completely talk about the third and final and most important piece for me to get unbearish, or perhaps not even unbearish, but bullish at this point is if Bitcoin can get back above six thousand, the area that it spent about a year going sideways upon. Of course, you're probably going to have indications beforehand, but uh, but hey, if it takes out 6,000 the upside, I would become immediately bullish on zero reason to be bearish after that from a technical analysis standpoint. Uh, but as you can see, yes, we actually do still we we actually do have our first potential change in two week behavior right here. Uh, now we just need to open and close this next one above it, and that will be the first time in a, an extremely long time. Uh, so 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 let's bring up our oscillators. I'm curious what they're saying. We do have our two week stokes actually headed up as well. Do you consider they're very 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 very. Uh, <laughs> they they stay they stay down here for Jesus Christ man um almost a year or getting closer to a year since June of last year uh but you know just like they can stay up you know to uh, to the upside in the quote unquote overbought zone which there's no such thing as overbought or oversold they can stay there for you know a year or, two, or a couple of years uh they can stay in the downside uh, as well so that is that that really did stick out to me yesterday night because we actually did change around some things or potentially in you know in the midst of changing around some things. I'm curious what the jewel says. Um, Jewel's jewel's pretty neutral right here. Uh, well, it's not necessarily neutral. It actually might be signaling along, uh, but it's it's not a full signal by any stretch of the imagination. I want to see something like this where everything's lining up. We're not quite getting that right now. In fact, they're all you know pretty much splayed apart. But if Bitcoin is going to initiate a uh, deeper run into the four thousands, uh, I'd imagine that it does it does it does happen, you know, from this area. Uh, that would make the most sense. Anyways, not that charts need to make sense, but going down to the six hour, what do we have here? Uh, six hour did close outside of the uh, 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 under the three seven seven exponential. We actually are below the ten simple, so this is what makes it difficult right here. It feels like the lower time frames are being painted to have a more bullish consolidation nature, um, but uh, I'd still be very. I, I'm just I, I have a hard time myself. I'm 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 very defensive in these areas. Very 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 defensive. But yeah, those things actually have changed. Um, I do want to go back to the weekly, and I forgot to check. What did we have on the weekly RSI? Uh, we saw that the weekly RSI, is it still going essentially sideways? Yes, it is. That is also a little bit concerning as well. Uh, we, we are technically, uh, we're, we're potential, as long as we are below about 4,100, we will be printing hit and bearish divergence on the weekly RSI if we actually do, if we actually did confirm a lower, or sorry, a local high here. But that is still, you know, still about a week away from actually doing that. Uh, weekly jewel, um, not really saying too much. It said buy right here, uh, and that was a couple months ago. So, fair enough. Uh, too late for that one. Anyways, let's see what else we got. Feels like it feels a little bit slow today, by the way. Um, hmm. Let's go back to the four hour. And I'm curious. Four hour is trending below the exponential. Mm, did lose a ten simple on the last tick. If we were to break down, I would be looking for support again right around 3,900. But there's actually plenty of things of coming around 3,900 now. Um, let's see. I do want to draw in a trend line right here, however, because it does feel like this is the guy that's getting respected right now. And where would that be coming in around around the uh, current trajectory? Yes, exactly. Right around the low side of this blue box territory, right around 3,900. So that is the area to hold. That is our uptrend line right now. If we do break that. You know, yes, there are supports lower, uh, 38, um, you know, 3850, 3800, and then 30, what was it, 3750. Uh, yes, we would have those supports, but overall, I would, you know, this whole structure would start to really fall apart. Um, 
But again, then, you know, we have to be looking at the two week because that's that that 3750 area will likely be support if we do come back down or at least an area of interest. So this is where the whole story starts to get a little bit more, a little bit more flexible, which again, just kind of getting more and more complicated. Okay, cool. So back on to CMEs and I just do want to, I do want to put the utmost importance on CMEs. You do see on the four hour that we actually do have the 377 actually acting on support right around this, you know, low 38, 39, 20 ish range. So there likely will be defense around here and I would be a buyer on the first pass or perhaps maybe not a buyer is the right word, but I will be, you know, I will be putting on some long deltas most likely. If we do break below 3,900, then I will immediately be selling um, some of the in the money calls. And as you can see, I'm already long some puts. So that's all really I have to say for Bitcoin, actually. Not all that much. Not all, not, uh, not all that much, funnily enough. Um, anyway, let's go check out the uh, the other top shit coins. I'm curious what they're doing. Let's actually go look at the longs and shorts. We got uh, Bitcoin longs right now, uh, almost at 23,000, but shorts catching up rather quickly. Uh, we're about 400, 400 differential between the two. And with um, 3,500 of these guys hedged, so a little under 19,000 open, uh, uh, open naked shorts versus uh, a little under 23,000 open um, longs, which is not anything crazy. Again, I am starting to really view this as changing around as well. Um, when we were looking at the shorts data on the longs and shorts on Finex, you can see that each and every time that the shorts have actually gone in this red box territory, it has emerged, major dumps have emerged from this area. Um, and we did get into this area once again uh, in, in, in the past month. And yes, we are, you know, shorts are gaining interest once again, but I'm not seeing the reaction on price action that I really want to see. If you remember these other dumps, this, this was your November dump from 6,000 to 3,000. There was no rest. There, there was no prisoners taken. This was your, you know, 8,400 dump in early August to 6,000. Again, similar thing, just straight, you know, just straight shorts going up. Uh, and same thing, you know, in, in May at 10,000 and same thing in February at uh, at 12,000 last year. So to me, we're, we're not really seeing the same sort of reaction, which does really uh, does, does really open up the potential that there is something new potentially going on. But as I said, when looking at all of the underlying mark dynamics, when looking at all of the mental masturbation features, those are great, but this is a very, 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 very strong case of price action first for myself. I would not be bearish unless 3,900 breaks on CMEs and I would not be you know, is bullish the right word? I'd not be looking for more upside until, you know, 4,000 breaks. Um, and then I'd be looking for about 4,150, four, or sorry, what was it, like 4,120, 4,130. I'm actually going to move off this baby right here. Assuming that it actually gets hit. A lot of these times, these will get front ran uh, when it's counter trend. Um, so, 40, yeah, 4,110, 4,120-ish area. So that's what I'd be looking for if it, you know, if it, did, if it were to break out above 4,000. But for now, um, still just getting more, you know, more signatures of consolidation. But so far, holding it up. So far, holding it up. All right, let's go check out the other top shit coins. Um, let's go check out BNB. What's BNB doing? Looking like looking a little bit tired and looking like he is filling out this rising wedge, which I am a wedge racist. I hate wedges of all shapes and sizes. And what's up, uh, Digital Res Publica? Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, but uh, but support right here, fifteen dollars and thirty five, thirty six, thirty eight cents. Fifteen dollars, thirty eight cents. As long as we're above there, you know, still kind of maintaining it. It's not until we actually break this area where I'd be looking for a move down to well, at the very least, right here at about fourteen dollars and uh, seventy five cents. But really, you know, somewhere probably down around here, around fourteen dollars and twenty cents. If um if we do start to violate this how area, however, that's where that's where the overall picture does get a little bit more intense because from the daily perspective, we do have significant bearish divergence going all the way through this round actually uh, one two three drives so far and we're back below the exponential and that would likely you know like uh, likely inside a test down around here right around yeah about that that low $14 region um, however if that area does break I would be looking for a full-on move down really to towards uh, eleven dollars and eighty five cents uh, somewhere right around here um, so again, you know, yes, it uh, BNB has been quite resilient. You could, did it lead the market to the upside? I think it kind of does its own thing, to be honest with you. I think like I think Mrs. Litecoin led the market to the upside. Um, but if we were to break this area right here, yeah, those are the areas that I'll be we'll be looking for. By the same token, um, if this thing were to break back above uh, sixteen dollars, then where's the next resistance to the upside? Uh, I suppose seventeen dollars and uh, twenty cents. It looks like. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for now for, uh, for Mr. BNB. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing over here? All right, let's actually go to the one that I already have charted out. Uh, where is it at? Yeah, 59 bucks. Jesus Christ, man. She's hanging up very high. 
Uh, I do consider this a test of the blue 377 on that last wick up. It didn't quite get there uh, uh, formally, but close enough is close enough. What is it? It's like 63 and a half uh, formally. Um, we got to wake up to about 62 and a quarter. It's close enough for me. Uh, but same thing here as BNB. Bearish divergence all the way through. One, two, three, four stabs. Uh, now getting kicked out of the bullish control zone and also losing the exponential as support. We are bouncing off the 10 simple so far, but I would be looking for this probably to have a, a, a more deep pullback. Um, when we got the pullback to 52 and a half the other week, that was good, but... I do believe that we might be setting we, we might be setting up for a little bit more of one. Uh, overall, still in the context of an ascending brawny wedge um, since since fucking early February actually. Jesus Christ, it's been a, it's been a month, and that resistance is kind of where we bounced off of last night, uh, rounding off the top of this um, of this formation right here again, right around 63 and a half we could say. Also, again, the major daily resistance as well on the 377. So. If we were to turn down, it would. It is starting to look a little bit more like distribution right here in an overall bearish formation, hitting a major exponential, hitting some major resistances, and also showing some major divergences. Um, this is like when it has been incredibly resilient, but do we see our oscillator starts to turn around? We do see four-hour stokes turning down. We do see 12-hour stokes getting tired, but not down just yet. Not not down just yet. What about daily? Same thing, getting tired, but not down just yet. So if Mrs. Litecoin were to turn down, I'd also probably look for look look for that to have uh, confluence and carry on over into Bitcoin. Um, uh, you know, as, as, as you know, right now, <clears throat> as you know, right now, uh, still not doing all that much. Anyways, uh, let's see. Jesus Christ, man, I feel like my brain is so slow today. I do pause about this Maybe need to get back on the coffee train. But uh, if it were to break down, I would be looking for a move down to about $56 as your next, as your next support. Yeah, I mean, uh, assuming that 58 breaks, uh, $56 would be the next support. And then below that, a very important one, right around 52 and a half. 52 and a half was tested multiple times last week and uh, defended multiple times. Very, 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 very good reaction. So if that were to break, I'd be looking for an overall, you know, an overall failure of the structure and probably break down to about 44 and a half, 45 dollars. But for now, this 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 purple exponential and this uh, and this uh, green exponential are getting rather close to each other, and that would be the 50 and the 200, which would be a daily total golden cross um, if Mrs. Litecoin can remain above. Essentially, if she can remain above about 52 uh, about 52 and a half dollars for the next, um, I'd say maybe less than a week. She will get a golden cross on the daily, and that would be a huge deal to me. Typically, I don't take the first golden cross after a long period of being death crossed, uh, but usually that's your first warning sign that bearish momentum is extremely waning um, in the overall, you know, in, in the overall market. So it still has a lot of work to do. Um, you know, obviously that's you know the, uh, at, at the very least about a week uh, about a week away. But hey something to keep your eyes on definitely something to keep your eyes on and something that i'll be monitoring uh, so that would be extremely significant but for now you know i would be thinking about this i would be thinking about all of the bearish divergence in the higher time frames i'd be looking at the ascending broadening wedge i'd be looking at all of the major resistances right here and you know 58 dollars breaks i would be looking towards about 56 bucks and uh, again do i get bearish off that no I, I don't necessarily get bearish on mrs like one until she breaks back below about 50 dollars actually i want to see her back below the 200 exponential on the daily before i get bearish on something like this but could it lead bitcoin as she did lead bitcoin to the upside or, or the whole market to the upside in my opinion uh, could she lead it to the downside well i'd uh, I, I'd, I'd argue so. I'd argue so. Um, let's go over and check out Mr. Buterol, the other market leader, and how's he doing? Actually, Mr. Buterol not getting uh, did wick above our critical resistance right here, the uh, the 144 resistance, or sorry, is it 143 and a half? 143 and, a qu and three quarters, um, but still not able to close any deltas above there. So it is interesting to me that we're not seeing buterol follow through with all of the majors this is why i'm just i'm very apprehensive i'm not seeing what i want to see to be fully conv uh, convicted and this is why i don't play you know I, I won't play spot positions to the upside um counter trend but uh but right now you know what do we have on the low time frames four hour technically did break out but i didn't make this chart on a four i made it on a daily so these you know these supports and resistances would be variable uh you know dependent upon the time frame and in fact the four hour did just lose to 21 and does look like we have some pressure down four hour stokes are down come on can we show them baby there we go uh four hour rsi does have some bearish or sorry not uh, not necessarily bearish divergence but we are turning below the exponential uh jewel is completely neutral not not saying anything right there what about 12 hour um, 12 hour, it did just lose the 200 exponential. It looks like, uh, obviously it still has another three hours and five minutes to go, but 
if we were to if we were to officially lose it, where do I look? At, where do I look to after that? I don't necessarily get bearish on this one either, though. It, it's got to break. It's got to break a major support first things first. Let's go back to the daily. The charts are so sloppy on a lower time frame that it's it's it, it's almost not even worth it to look. Uh, but it's not really. In, it looks it looks to me like it's not until Mr. Butero actually breaks 135 to the downside where I become bearish on him, looking for a move down at the very least to about 127, um, and then let very 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 likely if that were to break uh, 110, 111, something like that, right around here. Um, but for now, you can see that the 200 simple is just slowly but surely inching its way down. It seems like we're almost you know uh, respecting that from afar. Let's go back to the four hour. What does a four hour say? Mm, not really getting too much unique uh, unique thing from that. What about the eight hour? Um, eight hour would suggest a little bit more down as well, a little bit a little bit more downwards momentum. But gonna gonna depend on whatever Litecoin and Mr. Bitcoin have uh, have been doing. There they've been the more clear chart, so I do put more weight on them. Um, but it is very interesting to me that Mr. Butterall is just getting all the way up to our next resistance trend line right on the daily, and right as the daily ends, right as the daily closes. Uh, rejected right at the last second, and that's exactly what we're expecting today as well. As you see some sell pressure coming off this area again, 143 and uh, three quarters. If we were to break above, I would be looking for a quick move, probably around to the 200 simple, right around, uh, right around 161 and a quarter. Um, however, there will be a little bit of resistance right here as well at 152. Uh, if you are a scalper. Um, let's go check out what the other top shit coins are doing. What about Zcash? What's Zcash doing? Did he break out? Did he maintain the breakout? Breakout on a weekend. Um. Yeah, look, it looks it looks so. But look at the volume. Very, 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 very lackluster. That to me is not, you know, whenever I get something like that, I typically just redraw it. I want to see some major volume being thrown down like we saw over here if you're going to break out of a formation like that. And until that happens, to me, it's just, you know, it it, it just re... It, it, it just reforms, essentially. Uh, let's go look at Bcash, and let's see if Bcash has had follow through. He has. He has had follow through, uh, but still getting stifled right at the 89 exponential right here. Right around 162 and a half. Um, as we said before, if we were to actually break above this area, then I would actually, then I would be looking for a full move over here to about a, uh, about 200 even actually. Um, if 200 even is broken to the upside, then that's where the party gets started a little bit more. As uh, nothing really stopped me from the 200 simple all the way at uh, 280 ish area. Uh, pretty much also the breakdown. Um, whatever the whatever this was over here, I think it was during the fork of the BSV BAB uh, Tron Cash. Um, I've, I haven't really had anything to say on this for the last week. I mean, as long as we're below the 200 exponential and above the 200 simple, I'd, I'd, I'd be overall more neutral in it than anything. I mean, yeah, I, I suppose that there would be a little, it, it does look to me like it wants to give another test up to the two and a half cent region, uh, but I'd imagine that it probably does sell off on, on that pass. Um, and if it did break it to the upside, two and a half cent to the upside, I would be looking for a move all the way over to about almost three cent. Uh, but for now, you know, that's 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 the range that I see. Uh, 2.19 cent support to the downside. If we do break that to the downside, I would be looking for a full move down to about 1.9 cent, 1.8 cent. Uh, but of course, these are well and far away. We're quite literally right in the middle of the range, so there's not all that much to do. Uh, Neocash, what's Neocash doing? Um... Yeah, again, we broke out of this horizontal right here. No volume on it, zero volume on it, and then the next day, just take it right back out to the downside. So what's likely going on here? Well, what's likely going on here is that we actually have something new forming. We have to go down to a lower time frame, and we're doing, it looks to me like we're doing something like this. We've got something like this coming on here. As you can see, being governed by the 200 simple and 200 exponential, going originating from, our, from, uh, from, um, from the current low. And as long as we're kind of crawling up this guy, path of re least resistance is up. However, if nine if nine uh, dollar were to break, sorry, nine dollar and ten cent were to break, I'd be looking for a full move all the way back down, very 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 likely to this area right here at about eight thirty. You know, the, this is where the charts are starting to get a lot more sloppy. Um, what about the daily? What can we see here? Do we have anything on the daily oscillators that we should be aware of? Daily Stokes are getting a little bit up there, looking a little bit tired, but mm, nothing crazy. Uh, daily RSI not saying anything unique. What about EOS? I think that you know, I, I, there, there's not all that much else to say about it. EOS, uh, 200 x 200 simple resistance right around three dollars 91 cents. Uh, support right here at around uh, 362. If 362 breaks to the downside, I'd be looking for a move down to about 340. Uh, if the 200 simple uh, breaks the upside, you know, then I'd be looking for a move probably to your prior high around 433, 450-ish area, something like that. Uh, let's go check out uh, Mr. Ripple's nipples over here. Thir uh, again, we technically had a breakout of this ascending triangle, but look at the volume. There is 
it's extremely lackluster. So what happens when you get something like this? I just redraw it. I just redraw it because I'm not seeing the reaction that I really want to see. And in fact, if I actually, this is one of those scenarios where if I were to use the wicks on this guy or this gal, because it's Mr. Ripple's nipples, but you never know with today's world. Um, <laughs> uh, you do see that it actually respects this pretty damn well. And that's, that is where we found cell pressure off of uh, in the last night. Um, and this kind of is also forming a rising, uh, a rising channel right here as well, which typically does imply more bearish nature of it. However, you know, really what I want to see is, is massive volume being thrown down if we actually broke this area, which we just didn't get on the uh, on the breakage of 31 and a half. So I believe the right thing to do now is to redraw it. Uh, looking at daily, we have daily stokes getting, you can see that there's some resistance in this area. Uh, in, which is also right at the edge of the bullish control zone as it does lose a little bit of momentum, but still a long day to go. A lot, lot can happen the rest of the day. Uh, daily RSI, not saying anything, not, th not saying anything really of, of, of note. Uh, what about the weekly? Is there anything on the weekly? We are maintaining above the 10 simple. We have both open and closed above it. The weekly looks okay. The weekly does look like it wants to take a free shot at about 35, uh, yeah, about 35 cents. That's what we'll be looking at from the weekly perspective. Weekly stokes are up as well. Weekly RSI is completely flat uh that's not good either um but yeah weekly weekly would have a free shot at uh, 30 uh, 35 cent i'd say uh i do want to go back down to the four hour the, i man these these fucking charts are just so ugly right now so ugly yeah, I don't really have too much to say about it other than that. Uh, if we were to break, what is what is support right here? If we were to break 31 cent to the downside, I would be looking for a move down to about 29 cent. Um, 29 cent being the big support of this overall structure. If 30, if 29 cent breaks, I'd be looking for a move all the way down to you know 22 cent, low 20s essentially. Um, what about Monero Cash? Where's Monero Cash doing? It looks like he took a little bit of a leg in the overnight hours as well, but still at our resistance, still getting rejected from our resistance right here at the uh, at the 89 at the top of this structure. Which this is probably this is probably the chart that makes the most sense actually. Um, still creating lower highs, still still respecting our resistance right here and selling off of it. Support more preliminarily speaking at $52 even. I would be looking for a bounce anywhere from about 51 and a half to 52 bucks. As long as 51 and a half is defended, uh, I would be respectful of, um, you know, of, uh, of a more constructive consolidation. However, 51 and a half, is this 51 and a half? No, it's 51 and a quarter breaks to the downside. I would be looking for a move all the way down here to about 40, $48, a little bit below $48. So again, we're kind of at a decision point right now. So far, rejection. Um, but do we have anything to be aware of? Is the RSI saying anything right now? Mm, did we get any divergence there? No, nope, we didn't. Not making a higher high, so can't really have divergence then, can we? Let's see, what about uh, Stellar? Stellar grinding this top again and actually giving another stab up to our resistance trend line of this ascending brawny wedge, actually perfectly testing it and selling off of it, still respecting the horizontal as resistance. And to me, this is now going to be creating some bearish divergence on the daily. So we're going to be have to we're, we're going to be fighting that. I'd be looking for a move at the very least down to about uh, ten point four cent. Um, but if that fails, I would be looking for a move all the way down to about uh, li around 10, 10, uh, 10 cents a little bit below 10 cents that would happen um for right now uh daily stokes are looking tired you know we're seeing kind of the same signatures all around and yes this is an ascending brownie wedge which typically does break out to the downside although right now when you're testing the resistances it's not i mean it's i mean the the, the time to take a trade was on this resistance of course i wasn't you know i wasn't making a video at that time but uh i think if you were watching the video yesterday probably probably already got that one in um yeah four hours gonna be having bearish divergence as well of course if the daily's having it you're gonna see it on the lower time frames same thing with the 12 hour 12 hour is actually a little bit more advanced as we do lose the exponential right here 12 hour looks like it wants to come back down to about mm, 10 and a quarter let's say um okay so we got litecoin we got mr Beater, we got bitcoin uh traditional markets I want to look at traditional marks really quick what's where spy at what's spy at uh 281 yep i'm bullish on these guys as long as we're above 281 uh, what's what's the daily looking like right now? Um, daily Stokes, you just have a fresh cross up. Didn't even get below the neutral uh, the neutral zone. Yeah, again, not really anything crazy to say here. We are going to be having some bearish divergence in the four hour, but you know, price action first right now. As we do see the market starts to shift around, as long as long as uh, two seventy nine holds. Don't want to be bearish on this guy, and especially when you have a fresh daily little golden cross right here, which is being respected. The green and the purple. Uh, being respected right after that. Uh, I don't want to be bearish as long as we're especially above the 200 simple. Um, or I mean, even even above the yellow 20 month exponential. And those are all, all the way at 277 and 275 respectively. So uh, that's, that's what I'd be saying for that. Again, you know, same sort of thing here. We do have a very lackluster breakout, but 
I, I mean, tell that to the fucking shorts, right? <laughs> you know, tell that to the shorts. Um, I don't, tra I, I haven't traded traditional markets in a while, in about a year now. So luckily I don't have to deal with this, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if, as long as you're above 281, I would be, uh, I would be respectful of the upside here as well. Again, I've been bullish on these guys ever since that we got the daily little golden cross, but I feel it's a, it's very similar to cryptocurrency where I'm hesitant, you know, I'm very hesitant. It just, this, this rally coming off the lows just looks so it it looks exactly what you'd look for on 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 what probably would fail but again as soon as we close the monthly above the 21 which was in i think february sorry whoops just went to the weekly i need to go to the monthly uh that's that's when i said it was no longer time for me to be bearish on this guy yeah that was sorry that was january not february january um, and ever since then, we've actually, you know, just crawled our way back above all major moving averages. Very, 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 very powerful. And look at where the look at where the ten simple is is coming on the monthly, two seventy six. I mean, it's way fucking up there, and we're bouncing off of it right now. Uh, as far as the monthly is concerned, not too much stopping you from about two eighty seven, two eighty eight, two ninety. Um, again, looking quite strong. What is what about the monthly also? It is monthly stokes are getting going to be getting to the edge of the bullish control zone. Do they defend it right there? You'd imagine that uh, if they are going to, that would be the time to do, to to do that. Um, but I'd imagine if, uh, as, 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 as long as, uh, today's does not open down, I would be looking for some more continuations. Um, if today does open down, I would be looking to sell at 281 as that's going to look a little bit more like a hunt. But again, remember, uh, some significant supports on the way down 277 and a half, 275 and then 271, uh, being the big ones. As long as 271 is still, as, as long as a spy is still above 271 overall, I am, um, what's the best way to put this overall? I would be, uh, I would be more respectful of the upside in the more macro uh, perspective. So that's what I say about that. Uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is that spike could come all the way back down there, correct all the way down to there and still, you know, still maintain its overall decent posturing. Actually, you know what? I, I changed that to about 275, actually a uh, little, little bit lower. Anyways, back on a Bitcoin as I'll start to wrap this bitch up again for now. Um, still looking okay. Looking to me like this is morphing into its own consolidation as we're not getting the volume signature of like a true breakout that I'd be looking for if, um, if we were to be accelerating to the upside right now, uh, not getting that signature just yet. Um, the more preliminary resistance is going to be right around 4,000. I'd be using the 12 hour 200 exponential more preliminary resistance or sorry, support is going to be right around, uh, let's call it 3,900 even. Uh, but really with great respect to the CMEs uh, uh, over everything else, over, over everything else, because remember CMEs, um, this is the first time that we've actually made a higher high on the CMEs in a year, over a year. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, ever since the pretty much the existence of them. So again, this that are it will it will have a chance to make a higher high today. Need to actually like you know close the daily total above the prior high. But for now, looking fine. Um, and as long as uh, as long as thirty nine hundred is is uh, is supported, I think it's okay. Now I would I would be cognizant of this as well. There will be major resistance right around forty one fifty area. That that whole that whole area between forty one forty one hundred. Let's let's say like the low forty one hundred is like forty one ten to forty one fifty. Uh, so you do see the 12 hour 200 x uh, 200 simple coming in right around here as well which would be matching up with your prior high and like i said the cmes have had the more clean chart they have had the more readable chart and uh gets more respected as well so going to be very uh, going uh, to be very interested to see where today closes as long as it closes above 3900 though i would be um I, I would be respectful of this move. It looks looks fine right now. Like I said, daily oscillators are up. We got daily Stokes. We got daily RSI. Not, I mean, daily RSI just looks fine. There's there's no like glaring obvious issues with it right now. Uh, only the way that I'd see this kind of switching around is if we did violate 3900 um, with respect to CME. Spot can do whatever the fuck it wants. It almost doesn't even matter anymore. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's going to do it for today. I guess we'll wrap up the lower time frames just one more time, like the very low time frames, maybe the hourly right here. Uh, it does look to me like uh, like spot is actually trying to flag out right here, uh, using this 3950 as support, using the 4000 as resistance. Technically, this flag would have a measure move pointing all the way to about you know 4150 as we saw. Also, resistance on CMEs, also your prior high on CMEs as well. Um, and if we do, and if we that also means if we do break 39, uh, what is it like 3940 to the downside, the the, the, the proverbial support of this um, potential formation on the very low time frames. This is extremely low time frame action right now. Uh, be looking for a move down to around 3900 even. Again, that's going to be where the big test would would be incited. Um, so for now, that's going to do it. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Hopefully, I'll get some. Uh, I'll, I'll get a nice nappy nap in beforehand, so I'll be feeling better. But hey, uh, again, want to be wishing well. Want to be wishing you a more restful uh, start to your week, and uh, I'll be back on later. So take care and see you soon.